Hello, this is Howie, and I'm here to help you win with money. I'm starting a new series about biblical finances, and I wanted to start off with a topic. Money is the root of all evil. As we all know, we have heard that many, many times. So in this video, I want to address that. But before I begin, please like my channel. I produce investing money tips. I debunk myths with my Exposed by Math. And again, this one will be a new playlist about biblical finances. Let's try to start off with some common questions. First, I wanted to know what was the first, what was the fruit that Adam and Eve ate and got in trouble for? Come on, come on, I know you know the answer. Take a wild guess. Apple, maybe, but the Bible does not say. But for children's book, perfect illustration, easy to memorize, good color, right? Good looking fruit. Next question. How many animals of each kind did Noah bring? Two. Maybe. Could be seven. Some people think it's seven pairs. Anyway, what's the point of this? It may not be two. Whether it's seven or 14 or a little bit more, I don't think I care about that either. Because there are some things in the Bible that really, the exact answer is really not what's key. It's just understanding what it's trying to teach. Here, most of us understand it was two animals. How many wise men did Jesus visit Jesus on behalf of King Herod? And we know this one. Most of us is the wise men, free wise men. Maybe. Could have been two. Could have been four. Could have been five. Who knows? The most uh, common interpretation is how many gifts were there. And based on the gifts, each, each wise man had a gift. And so that's the guess. But what if one guy carried two different items? Or in his wagon, he carried it all, right? But we don't know. So what's the point of all this? The point is, there's a lot of misconceptions that we teach. So before I begin, I'm always going to cover this. I am not doing sermons. You can Google that. You can. There are other people who are much more qualified than I am to do sermons. I will use a blend of scripture, my understanding, and some real world practicals of what this means and how it applies. My videos will just be done in any random order doesn't really matter and of and of course I don't represent anyone other than myself I don't speak for a church or a denomination or, or you know any particular uh, world view I guess outside of what I understand from reading the Bible so with that let's go back to this one of the most misquoted money verses money is the root of all evils and we heard this many times as we're growing up but I wanted to pull out this verse and here you can see it. And so what we're going to do is break this down. So what I did was, let's, let's talk about the first piece. It says, but godliness will contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, we cannot take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. So my first question is, are you content with just God alone? Regardless of what you're doing in your life. Regardless of your age. That's really the first question. It's not about where you live. Not about your skin color, your upbringing. It's not about anything. It doesn't even matter about your job title. Are you content with God alone? But more than that, sometimes people use this part of the scripture to reverse it and say, Hey, look, you born with nothing, you die with nothing. All you need is food and clothes, and that's all you need. And then people try to push the other narrative, which is you don't need a house. You don't need a car. You should walk everywhere. Uh, you can, I don't want to say carpool, or you, we share bicycles, right? We live in a common community where everyone shares everything. And we're sort of like Acts 2, where everybody share with everybody. And so sometimes the narrative is pushed that, we need to live in a society like that. And this is not what it's saying, right? 
this concept of money is good or bad, it's not down here, right? So anyway, let's move on to the next part. Verse 9 through 10. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and into a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Verse 10 is key. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds like a really stern warning against money. And money is talked a lot about in the scripture. Often people say more, more about money and possessions than even like faith, right, in the Bible. And so it's okay for us to talk about this today. So let's go back and it says, those who want to get rich fall into a temptation. Now this can happen to anybody, right? It doesn't talk about who or doesn't talk about anything else. It's those who want to get rich will fall into a temptation. And so the question is, it is so easy then to be tempted by getting rich or the desire to have more. And there's nothing wrong with having more or bettering yourself or improving your income or driving a nicer car. Right? Nothing wrong with that. But what the Bible is teaching here is it's saying the temptation is to be tricked and, and you're going to hurt yourself, your family, and your loved ones next to you. Now, I wanted to talk about this. Right? I'm not here to pick what is a scam and what's not a scam. Right? Education is a popular topic. Is a four-year degree a ripoff? Well, I, I know there are many people who feel that way. And a lot of it's because of your student loans. If you got a $50,000 student loan or $100,000 or a quarter million dollars student loan, you feel like you're trapped in this thing for 20 or 30 or 40 years of student loan payment. But is it a scam? Well, right, that's, that's obviously one person's experience or, or, or maybe a segment of population's experience. It may not provide a good ROI, right? You may not have good return on investment. If you went to a very expensive school and paid $40,000 a year and you accumulated $160,000 in loans and your degree, then you decide to go and do something else that makes almost nothing. I don't think that's a scam. You may not have gotten good return on your investment, on your education, right? And so... Let's be cautious of what we think is bad and good. And it's, it's really, the item itself may not even be the bigger thing. It's this temptation, right, of you wanting to do something because you want to get rich. And then you lead yourself into other things. So the key here is, is the love of money. The love of money is not the same as saying money is the root of all evil. So now, let's talk about this a little bit more. I'm going to ask you some questions. Anyone can love money. People think it's just middle class or the rich guy or the guy who talks about it. You can be dirt poor and have a love for money. You can be homeless and you can love money more than anything else. No different than how we live. And so... Anyone can love money. A lot of us always assume it's one type of person who can love money. And that's not a true statement, right? I can be middle class or poor, and I can, my desire is to make that next hundred bucks. And then you may have somebody next door to me or, or some rich dude or a rich lady, and they're making a hundred thousand a month. And they may not even be desiring that money they just may be in a different business where they're making way more money and poor me i gotta go work and i'm trying to like make five or ten bucks and i'm trying to do side hustles and you know you may be driving uber or whatever you're doing right we're trying to do side hustles to survive but anyone can love money so that's the first point but here are some other things that i want to ask you do you have a hard time giving 
to charities? Do you have a hard time giving to others or, or a tie to a church? Because if you do, that may be an indication that the love of money is causing some issues there. Have you ever pushed products or, or worked on a job that paid commission, right? And you probably do really well. You push that stuff really well. But one thing I have noticed is I have met a lot of salespeople who, who are really good at selling. But when it comes to Jesus, all of a sudden they don't know how to sell Jesus. Is that a problem? Or do you use this, well, you know, I do have to work 50 hours a week or 40 hours a week or 80 hours a week, and that's part of my job. I have to sell and I have to push products because I get paid and my family depends on it. And yet, when it comes to Jesus, you may say, shoot, I barely have time to push Jesus for 20 minutes a week. Is that a problem? Is that a sign of love? Of money. Have you ever joined a Ponzi scheme or something similar? That may be an indication of the love of money and trying to get rich quick. There's a lot of different things that look like Ponzi schemes or, or may not even look like Ponzi schemes, but it's a similar, it's in the similar mindset. Have you paid or joined something that promised you quick returns on your money where you can make more money than ever? In, in, with a hundred buck investment or whatever it may be. That's a sign of maybe you have a problem with the love of money. If you have an addiction that's gambling or similar forms of it, some people sports bet, right? Some people gamble at Vegas. But there's many forms of this and so sometimes people don't realize that an addiction, right, where you're taking bets or something similar. And this can cover day trading. It can cover the stock market, which is what I do. And I always have to check myself to make sure, am I addicted to the gambling, right, or to investing? Or am I addicted on this concept of making money? And last but not least, this is more of a wider approach. If you spend more time developing or investing in your career, but not in relationships, family, outreach, you know, Bible studies, then you need to consider if you love money more than other things. So with this question, it's a little bit more complex. No one is saying you can't be a lawyer and work 50 or 60 hours a week or be a doctor. No one is saying you don't need continuous continuous education credits right that's part of your career or taking courses to retrain yourself that's not what we're talking about but one measure is how much do you really devote to the kingdom how much do you devote to bible study how often do you share your faith or share a scripture with people have you ever studied the bible with anyone have you converted anyone where you sat down and helped someone get to know Jesus a little bit more? These are things that I think you should look at. Do you invite people to your house? If you're going to make all this money, you should have food in the fridge to invite people over. Same thing with your career. You're going to have a great career, but for what reason? I talk about money. I do money coaching. That's what I do. I volunteer my time at my local church. I teach Dave Ramsey's FPU and most of those are volunteering. You don't get paid for that and you volunteer. And I help people, right? People call me up or email me and they want money advice. And so I do love math and I love investing and I love teaching about the principles of it. And so people do ask, well, what about your love? Right? And I get that. It is a passion of mine to teach about money. But most people who know me know I have always been giving. I have always been reaching out, Bible studies, right? 
I'm very involved. When I started my business, I have donated money to organizations and other charities through my business. At work, I never got a promotion. I don't invest my time in life to get promoted and go up the ranks. And I'm not saying promotions are bad, but in my career, I have not done the things that gets me a promotion. And that's okay. Sometimes it's my fault, and there are other times where it's a choice of mine, where I'm not going to go and do certain things at work. You know, I've been asked to lie. I've been asked to talk a certain way, or, or whatever it may be. And I, many of you have similar experiences at the workplace. And I have to tell people, I am not going to do those things. And that's okay. And so when I look at my life, I have quit a job. I was overseas making quite a bit of money when I was much, much younger. And I quit a job. Came back to America with no job. And, you know, it was hard. It, it, it's, it's not an easy thing. And so I say all these things to say, I have always kept this in front of me to make sure I am not the guy who's doing it for the love of money because that will cause ruin in my life and it will ruin my family's life and it will bring me down to a place where I don't want to go. So I always, always make sure I'm doing it for the right motivation. And in the end, what I have learned is this is why my investment philosophy is shaped by a lot of my beliefs of what the Bible teaches about money. I don't take high risk. When I invest in stocks, I don't do high risk. I'm not, I'm not, when I do options trading, I don't do high risk. So a lot of what I do is based on understanding some of the math and understanding probabilities, and this shapes my view of investing, and it does influence how I go about it. And it may be different from other investors, and that's fine, right? I'm not saying all strategies are sinful or wrong. That's definitely not what I'm saying. There is, the Bible will shape your views. That's what it should do. And so for me, what it does, it, it shapes my views on how I do investing to a point where I don't need 10% return rates or 15 or 20 or 100 or triple your money in a year. I don't need that. In fact, I will be content, right? We talked about contentment in the beginning. I am content if the stock market returns me 5 or 6 or 7% a year or on average, you know. And because my retirement and the way I plan for it does not require this outrageous percentage because that could be the love of money. It will make you take higher risks and in the end you may get burned and it doesn't produce what you want. So hopefully you enjoy this. I want to hear your thoughts and comments and your personal experience with the love of money. And hopefully I will create another video in the future on a different scripture with another practical or uh, understanding of that verse and how it applies to what I do as a money coach. As always, I hope you enjoy this. Like this video. Subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much. And have a profitable day.